Chris Williams here. Today we're going to be talking about can you 3D print an ABS on a Creality Ender 3? Stay tuned, we're going to find out. Crazy Will here from Crazy Will's Tech Show. Today, we're going to be talking about can we 3D print an ABS with a standard Creality Ender 3. That's what we're going to take a look at today. So I've tried a lot of different filaments and the two companies that always run tried and true and that come to mind that I look for the most is Hatchbox and Overtrue. So those are the two brands that I prefer. You may have a different type of brand that you prefer. Go with that brand and go for their ABS. I'm sorry. I got a 3D print going on right now because I'm still doing testing for this experiment. Hopefully it'll be done by the end of this recording and I apologize for the noise in the background. So if you're going to print an ABS, please pay attention to this video because this will save you tons of time and a lot of aggravation because I learned a lot in the last three weeks that I've been playing with this ABS. So I decided to choose Hatchbox for my ABS and I'll leave a link in the description down below. I do not get anything for it. I don't have affiliate links so, you know, if you can find it cheap or if you know a local retailer, please go local. I mean, that, that'd be awesome. So basically what ABS stands for, I cannot pronounce. So I'm gonna put it across the bottom right here. Basically, it's the same stuff that Lego is made out of. Now you might wonder, well, you know, we do FDM printing, we use PLA, why would we bother with ABS? Well, if you're worried about temperature or making basically parts for cars or other things for outside that is gonna be exposed to the elements and exposed to extreme heat, you want to be able to keep the integrity of your print. That's what we're looking at today is printing in a stronger, more heat resistant material, supposedly. And, and you know, this is up for debate and I've seen YouTube videos that say it's really strong and I've seen other YouTube videos that said it's not so strong. So it's a stronger material from what I noticed so far, not by much, but it's more heat resistant. And that could be just my experience with Hatchbox. I'm running a stock Ender 3 with a glass bed. Now the glass bed that I have actually has this stippling effect and I'll show you a little preview here. A print that I just got done, as soon as it cools, I'll be able to just pull this off. Right now, you can't do that. It's, it's, it's on there pretty good. There's nothing I can do right now. I gotta wait for it to cool off. Now with that said, if you're going to be printing an ABS, you need to make sure that that bed is super level. And being that we're gonna have to use higher temperatures to get this working correctly, how to level your Ender 3, follow this video right up here, and I take you through the steps of leveling out your bed. That's the way I level it. In order for me to use that, I had to go into Autonomo and edit the G-code. Now, don't be scared if you open it up in Autonomo, these are the three variables you wanna change. M190 space S, Instead of 45, you want to make that 100. That's your bet. M104 space S, you want to change that to 230. And M109 space S, you want to change that to 230 as well. One is your hot end temperature, and the other one is actually your, your get started temperature. So I had to go in there and change that on my file and then upload it up to my Ender 3. And then that way it'll put it up to temperature because the temperature is changing and it's making it so the bed's not going to be level. So PLA will work at like 45 to 70 degrees. This is going to 200, so there's a lot more expanding and contraction going on. So you want to make sure that this is going to be perfect level because ABS has kind of almost like a slippery type of texture so you want to make sure that it's not too tight and not too loose and when I say that I went to the point where I got too tight and then I had to scrape all this crap off my bed it wouldn't come off the bed so there is a happy medium where you can make it too tight and if you make it too tight it's like it, it has a hard time getting out and it makes it impossible to get it off the bed so you want to try and make it where it'll just touch the bed enough but not too far away where it'll It'll just slip off and you'll have stringing everywhere. So you really gotta make sure the bed is level if you're gonna be playing with this material. Let's go over to the computer. I'll show you my Cura settings so that way you guys will have no ifs, ands, or buts to set up ABS for your Ender 3. All right, so here we are in Cura. What we wanna do is we wanna go into materials and go down to manage materials. We're going to this preference here. We're gonna click on generic ABS. What we're gonna do is duplicate it You'll see that it's duplicated, it's actually ABS, it's like tilted a little bit. We're gonna, Instead of generic, we're gonna call it Hatchbox because I have a little section for Hatchbox. 
All right, and I'm gonna leave it the color green and we're gonna go over to printing preferences. Now, I've noticed that 240 is too much, so I'm gonna go down to 230, and this is my own experience. Build plate temperature, we wanna put that at 100 degrees. And that's what's been working for me. Standby temperature, I'm gonna put it at 230. And while I'm in here, I also like to do everything else we're gonna keep the same, but while we're in here, I also like to put in, I'm gonna put in the price. So I paid around $20 for this filament, and it was 1,000 grams. So it'll give me an idea of what it'll cost to print certain things. That's just my own personal preferences. Okay, so this is all done. We're gonna hit close. And now if you look into your settings, and this is really great, you can click on Hatchbox, ABS, ABS. So we just click on that. Now, anytime you wanna do a print, you could just pull it down from here. It's a good idea to save that in there. Let's bring something in and I'll show you how I set up for print. If you didn't see my tutorial on the jewelry stand that I built in Tinkercad, you could take a look at that right here. Let's just say we wanted to print that. I'm gonna do it at the standard 2.0. 20% we're gonna put on supports and adhesion and we're gonna go to customize and we're gonna scroll down to where we see build type and we're gonna build a skirt around the whole entire thing that's what we're gonna do and also in here if you want to do a raft you could do that as well or if you want nothing but the skirt is gonna help keep the temperature in we'll go back to recommendations we'll put on adhesion and then we'll go ahead and slice now if we go to preview, you can see there's a nice skirt going all along the bottom which will help keep the heat and keep this piece flat. So if we go all the way down to the first level, it's gonna build this little skirt before it actually gets in there. And that's gonna help keep the heat in and actually make it stick better and that way it won't pop up off of you. Because if you go ahead and just print it right here from that, there's a good chance that it's gonna lift off the bed. Now, if you did wanna do a raft, that's another thing. And I'll show you what that looks like. Bottoms of your prints don't come off as well, but it does stick kind of i would stick with the skirt personally but i'm just going to show you the raft and basically what this is going to be doing it's going to be building up a raft and then building your layer at the, on top of it so it'll build a raft first and i'll show you what the raft looks like starts off as just lines going one way and it's a good way to keep the heat in and then if you go to layer two here it builds layers the other way and it just gives it a nice bed for it to and and here too so i haven't been having too much luck sometimes if there's certain prints that i feel will look better or come off better you got to use your judgment and see once you start playing with the stuff you'll get an idea of what you should use a raft for for and what you should use a skirt for. I would highly recommend you that you do some type of adhesion because this stuff needs temperature to stick to the build plate and this kind of helps. So that's basically the settings that I used and I'll show you what I was able to pull off. And yes, I know you need an enclosure for ABS. I was trying to see what I could do just with the stock Ender 3 and I'm not ready to build an enclosure or change things up for my printer just for ABS, not just yet. So let's go over to the workbench so I can show you what I was able to print. The first thing I tried to do, obviously, was try to make a temperature tower. That did not go over too well. If you do not have the bed heated up correctly, you will get this weird warping because the hot end is putting out too much heat and the bottom end is not. So you have like this line right there. You see how it's curved? That's the bottom layer. It was just curving like crazy. So once I edited some of the parameters and did a lot of test cubes that messed up, as you can see, the, the corners of the test cubes got really messed up. After doing many, 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 many test cubes, I figured out what the good temperatures were where it wouldn't be messing up on the layer. As you could see, as I got better and better, I noticed the bottoms would be better. This test cube was the best test cube so far, and that was at 100 degrees on the bed, 230 on the hot end, and I think that printed out really good. Of course, I compared them with PLA, and so we could just get an idea of what we're looking at here. This is PLA, this is ABS, and you could see not that much different as far as print quality. Once you get the right temperature, they print out pretty nice. This is your look at PLA versus ABS. The next thing I wanted to try and see if it can make more bigger pieces and this is a rack that I made for my magazines. It came out all right, it's a big piece and you can see a little warping here and there but nothing that bad and it's a bigger piece compared to my hand. You can try to get an idea. 
And then I wanted to go even bigger, so I went with a nice vase. I think printed out pretty good. It looks like it has some burn marks on it, I guess. But I think it came out really good, nice and strong. Sorry, paint underneath my nails. I was painting earlier. This one I actually did with a raft, and you could see it doesn't like to stick to that raft too well, but it does stop a lot of the warping. So you gotta kinda like figure out what you wanna sacrifice. Next piece, a piece that I made a while back for my light, put it on a light stand, came out pretty good. Did mess up right there a little bit, it splits. That's the only thing, I guess the cooling, I guess I have to make that a little bit bigger. So it does have problems with splitting. Onto that, I also did a wrench that I couldn't print before because it was designed for ABS. I did have a little problem with this sprocket and some splitting on it and some curvature if you can see it in there. I tried doing that again with a raft and I'll show you it with the raft. And it got rid of some of the bending but then we get that nasty bottom again where it's like it's, it's having a hard time sticking. I did not care for that. But the wrench came out a little bit better. It's still not where I would like it to be. This is having a problem now screwing. So far I've, I've seen that it's been better straight on the bed and just putting a raft around it and then peeling it off. You want to make figures. This was my first attempt at baby Groot did not go it started printing really nice but then stuff got attached to the nose and I had to re-level the bed and I constantly had to try to re-level the bed because I think the temperature really messes it up so there you go baby Groot I was actually able to make him the supports came off really nice especially around his fingers I got a lot of nice detail on the fingers and I think the character came out really good just as good as PLA would do like I said the raft I don't think it was a good idea because again this is one of those diffuse boxes you put those uh, silicone balls in it to take moisture out and then you stick this in the middle of your filament roll you could see it rounded out the edges and I'm printing one right now we'll see if that comes out better it screws on really nice I gotta say it did, did do a good job with that and I could still use this just... so yeah that was what I was able to pull off on my ender 3 using Using the Hatchbox Filament ABS. Using a skirt is really what's going to make these adhere and stop a lot of the warping. So and I wanted that flat surface because I've, I've noticed if I put it on a raft, it doesn't get a smooth surface. It's very rough. It's not working as well as if it goes onto the glass bed. Now I reprinted this. So this one was just printed with a skirt and we're going to try and see if we can pull some of this off. Alright, so as you can see. It does pull off. It probably needs to be cooled a little bit longer. And then you just remove the schmutz. Very smooth finish on the back here. This is the lid. A lot better than this lid, as you can see. <laughs> no comparison, really. So I do like printing on the glass bed if I need a nice finish. We'll just peel it off like so. So as you can see, really nice smooth finish there. A little bit of edges that you gotta peel off. It screws together really nice, really tight, no problems. And that's a really nice finished piece of ABS, almost as good as if I did it in PLA. So, the overall question, can you print on an Ender 3? Yeah, some of the stuff you can do. You could probably do it better if you have an enclosure, but you could definitely print ABS on an Ender 3. And uh, I'm proof of that. Pretty much all stock Ender 3. I was able to print ABS pretty decently after playing around for quite a while. That's it for me, guys. Make sure you like, subscribe, and ring that bell if you want to get notifications when a new video comes out. And remember, you can do anything if you put your mind to it. Later, guys! With the wrong settings, and it did not go well at all, as you can see, I tried. You're still here? You haven't clicked on all these videos that I made? Or, better yet, like button? Or even better, subscribe button? Just putting it out there.